So welcome to Schema Publica for our new session today on the future of metaverses. Joining me today is Margarita Pagani. Margarita, thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, you have uh, plenty of titles, so I'm going to read. You are director of the Schema Resource Center for Artificial Intelligence. You are associate dean of Schema AI School for Business and full professor in digital and artificial intelligence in marketing. That's right. <laughs> well, uh, as you may know, uh, the uh, Commission launched recently an initiative on metaverses. And you, Margarita, were appointed as an advisor to the European uh, Economic and Social Committee uh, in a working group uh, on virtual worlds and metaverses, or virtual worlds such as metaverses, exactly. exactly. And we may note that uh, you are the only academic representative in this group is important. And so you worked, you group worked on an opinion, a first opinion that was uh, presented to the uh, European Commission and was approved last April by the European Commission. And now you are working on the second opinion that will be presented to the uh, Commission and uh, in uh, next December. So now, Margarita, to start with you. What is, for the beginning, what is your definition of the metaverse, the metaverses of virtual worlds, and who are the main players, public and private, in that field? Thanks, Claude, for uh, having me. First of all, uh, uh, what is the metaverse? Uh, uh, there are different definitions, and the metaverse is an immersive and uh, interactive virtual environment that connects uh, digital spaces, uh, application services. Uh, and it offers, and this is the most important thing, uh, to individuals, but also businesses, uh, several opportunities uh, for uh, to conduct economic activities, creativity and innovation. And uh, it blends uh, the physical worlds with the digital worlds. And we, we ah. talk about uh, uh, twin, digital twins. So there are, I would say that there are three layers of the metaverse. The first layer are the consumer metaverse that impact more the individuals, the user that can live uh, the virtual experience. So they change the way they interact. Uh, we usually uh, recognize the metaverse as gaming, because, um, but uh, potentially also in the retail, uh, the user may have different experiences. And uh, in this world, uh, artificial intelligence, blockchain, virtual reality, augmented reality have an important role uh, in transforming this way to interact uh, in offering also several uh, opportunities for the individuals. The second layer is uh, the enterprise uh, metaverse. Yeah. And I think the interest is on this level. Uh, enterprise and metaverse uh, evoke, uh, I would say, the opportunity for uh, companies uh, to make more efficient the processes. Uh, already there are several companies, private and public, uh, I'm thinking Renault, I'm thinking uh, Airbus, uh, just to mention someone, uh, that are doing some uh, processes uh, in the metaverse. Uh, I'm thinking crash test, uh, but also other activities. Uh, and so these activities became more efficient. Uh, think about also the simulation that can be run uh, in the metaverse uh, or the possibility to test product uh, before investing in the physical world. And finally, and um, as a researcher, I'm very interested in this uh, third layer. It is represented by the industrial metaverse. Yes. Yes. I think uh, the, the games, the uh, business oh. games are yes. more here yes. because uh, we see the emergence of the platforms, mm -hmm. the meta platforms yes. that are uh, uh, based uh, not in the physical world, but in uh, the metaverse uh, and are reading uh, uh, selling lands uh, and so offering uh, spaces uh, to the companies uh, to develop uh, experiences for their customer. But the platforms uh, have a, a main power, I would say, in this new ecosystem because they can collect data. So they gather data mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the customer and they share this data with uh, the companies. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And precisely, you just uh, mentioned Meta, the, the new word Meta. Uh, and do you think that the, the uh, metaverse is uh, really the next big, big thing? Because uh, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Meta, <laughs> announced on Facebook recently 
uh, that uh, uh, now he was focusing on uh, uh, artificial intelligence. He created a team focused on artificial, artificial intelligence. And a month later, in a, in a letter to the uh, uh, Meta employees, he said that the, I, I'm reading, the single largest investment of the company is in advancing AI. So if Meta is shifting from its focus from the uh, metaverse uh, to uh, AI, uh, so does the metaverse technologies uh, still have a future? Good question. Um, so first of all, uh, we have to distinguish uh, what is generative AI and the metaverse. As I said before, the metaverse is this uh, virtual environment where AI plays an important role. Yeah. In the metaverse, there is blockchain, there is augmented reality, virtual reality and AI. Uh, this means that companies that are investing in generative AI Okay, they can take their strategic positioning in uh, prioritizing generative AI, but metaverse and generative AI are not mutually exclusive mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, the strategic position of meta can be to focus more on mm -hmm. generative AI and artificial intelligence, but investing in generative AI, this uh, creates a new opportunities also for uh, to mm -hmm. create new experiences mm -hmm. in the metaverse. Oh. Of course, uh, to answer your question, if it is the next big thing, uh, uh, we need to see if there will be a market uh, so huh? the consumer will be in the metaverse. I could say that already the company are there, already the platforms are there. So necessarily the regulation and also uh, at the European uh, uh, level need to regulate this environment mm -hmm. because uh, potentially there are already uh, transactions, money transactions. Yes, yes, of course, yes. There is already customers that are there, maybe today just for gaming, but potentially also for virtual experiences in the retail, mm -hmm. in the different environments. There is a huge potential for the education. So different domains, different industry can be impacted. And so definitely it is a, an interesting technology trajectory that needs to be explored, regulated, and maybe developed more. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. And uh, what are the pros and cons of this uh, technology, you know? As what you see, what do you see as advantages for the companies, for the individuals, etc. We'll see the risks in the next questions, but you know now advantages for the companies, individuals, and citizens, and citizen, and citizens, yeah, yeah. of course. No, certainly. So the development of the virtual worlds in societies uh, offer uh, several advantages for both uh, individuals but also companies. And uh, if we go more in depth, uh, I would say, first of all, uh, for companies, uh, adopting uh, these new technologies, these virtual worlds, uh, open up uh, a lot of opportunities. Uh, firstly, virtual worlds uh, provide uh, a platform for enhanced customer engagement, uh, so new interaction, new way to interact with the customer, but also immersive experience for the customer. Mm. And so this has a effect on uh, increased brand loyalty, increased brand affection, a different way to interact with the brand in these new digital spaces. But uh, virtual worlds uh, offer companies also the possibility to conduct cost-effective research and development. Uh, this is very important. Uh, think about uh, the simulation uh, and the virtual worlds. Uh, so it's possible, as I said before, uh, uh, to refine uh, products or service before investing significant uh, mm -hmm. amount of money in the physical uh, uh, space. So I can test, I can do simulation. And it is not only save time, time of money, but also foster innovation and interaction. And uh, if you consider individuals or citizens, I would say the virtual world awards provide uh, several needs, address several needs and the solution, first of all, in entertainment or uh, to live a different experience in this, uh, in this connected world and uh, offer also to the educational, uh, educational benefits because it's possible also uh, to simulate a real world scenario, but uh, allowing the individual to acquire practical skills and knowledge in a safe and controlled environment. I think about American students, uh, they can also test uh, and learn uh, and create, uh, do practice surgical procedures uh, in this uh, metaverse, or uh, also for pilots uh, that can test uh, and make a scenario. And 
Yeah, th- th- sorry. And uh, finally, I would say for citizens, because when you think about smart cities, uh, and uh, there are already some cities that are working on the digital trends, uh, imagine that in the metaverse, uh, this municipality can offer several services uh, in, the, in the metaverse. And this uh, makes more efficient also for the citizen, I'm thinking also uh, for uh, aged people uh, or people that avoid uh, to, to spend the entire day to, to get mm. a certificate mm. and they can do it in the metaverse. Uh, mm-hmm. And also save energy, save time. Of course, there is also the bad, the bad side. I, I don't touch this because we are talking about the advantages. I just want one more question. Uh, does metaver- metaverse um, answer existing needs? Or does it create new needs? Definitely, it, it creates definitely new needs, yeah. uh, which are associated with the risk uh, and the cost, oh. I would say. Because uh, when we think about the small cities, uh, we have to create a digital trend uh, that is absorb a huge amount of energy. And so what to do with this, uh, the, the temperature uh, that oh. increase? Uh, is. Okay. Uh, mm. And this is uh, the big uh, thing, the big oh. risk. Uh, already some companies are thinking way uh, to transform this uh, energy that is produced mm-hmm. uh, by the server in mm-hmm. uh, 18 public uh, uh, public buildings for example uh, but maybe also mm-hmm. the government the institution can also call for actions in mm-hmm. this direction uh, so definitely yes new needs uh, and also and this is one of the emergent points that is addressed uh, also during the debate uh, at the level of the european economic and social committee is also to consider the needs for employees uh, the needs uh, for the citizen, uh, because uh, first of all, uh, the, the cities and the individuals, our data are tracked. And mm-hmm. so a regulation is important in this direction. And maybe for public policies, it may help maybe public poli- defining public policy, maybe. But it's just personal life. No, 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 definitely. Okay. So there are different several issues, mm-hmm. but consider that uh, I was very lucky to be involved in this uh, opinion piece uh, mm-hmm. because it exposed me also to First of all, the, the position of the institution and the regulatory environment. Uh, and also, uh, we had several hearings with companies, uh, so listed really mm. the real needs of the companies. Mm. Uh, and uh, it was interesting, it was an exploratory, this phase, uh, to identify which are the critical issues associated exactly. to the okay. matters, uh, mm. that need to be addressed. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And so, what are the risks and issues to the, uh, associated with the metaverse? Uh, uh, notably the, in the field of uh, data protection uh, mm-hmm. of uh, business uh, in terms of business opportunities and risks, interoperability, etc., etc. Yeah, <laughs> I think you have ideas. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, definitely, okay, for the user, so on the side of the individuals, uh, there are uh, the primary concern is data protection, as mm-hmm. I said before. Uh, with the metaverse, uh, there are a huge amount of data that are collected by platforms, uh, by companies, uh, and so several uh, personal information that maybe are shared in a more natural way, mm-hmm. and so they need to be addressed and regulated. Uh, and also uh, some uh, regulation regarding the collection, the storage, the usage uh, is essential to safeguard uh, the user rights, uh, definitely. Mm. Inclusivity, I would say, is another critical issue because uh, the metaverse should be accessible and welcoming uh, uh, to users of different backgrounds, uh, abilities and demographics. And so several efforts uh, have to be made by the institution at the regulation level to avoid discrimination, uh, to avoid uh, problems such as harassment, uh, hate speech uh, and offensive behavior with data virtual spaces. So inclusivity is uh, a principle that uh, should guide the development uh, and the operation of the metaverse. From a business perspective, uh, I would say one challenge is uh, achieving interoperability. Mm-hmm among uh, different platforms. Uh, we had uh, during the hearing uh, also the different institutions that uh, are in charge of the regulation. Uh, interoperability is very important for the standard. So establishing a common standard protocol uh, is useful to enable seamless interaction and communication across the metaverse uh, and uh, to offer also ensure that the business can reach a wider audience without being limited to a specific platforms. Uh, um, and then another business opportunity, of course, uh, comes uh, with the risk uh, is uh, intellectual property mm-hmm. protection, copyright infringement uh, that are significant concerns uh, uh, when the metaverse will expand more. 
So clear guidelines and mechanisms must be established uh, to protect trademarks, uh, copyrights, uh, other forms of intellectual property, enabling creators to retain their rights uh, and encouraging healthy creative ecosystems. So to address this risk, uh, of course, it's important the role of government uh, in defining um, an industry player and user communities uh, that have to work together to establish regulation, guidelines, uh, ethical frameworks, uh, and uh, promote a safe, inclusive, and uh, thriving uh, metaverse ecosystem. And the, <laughs> the question of interoperability, um, who is, to your knowledge, uh, currently working on these uh, on standards? Are certain people currently working on standards of operability? Who is leading this work, there if there are certain? Uh, I think we are in a stage where there is not uh, okay. a leading uh, standard operator. Uh, there, is a, there are different players. It is I an mean, issue. Uh, yes, it is an issue in Maybe for ISO, ISO, or I don't yes, know. Yes, exactly. And then consider that it's not uh, only an European problem. Then, uh, of course, it's international. Yeah. An harmonization yeah. with uh, China, US, uh, so mm. more uh, at the continental level. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. And uh, to finish, but uh, more the, the last but not the least, uh, you are working with the uh, European Commission, European uh, Econom Economic Committee, etc. Um, what is, could you tell us some uh, words on what is the Euro European vision uh, on this metaverse? I mean, in terms of policies, in terms of political uh, you know, view and long-term strategy, uh, what would you say on the European vision? Uh, on the develop, development of metaverse. Uh, if you so, can, yes, if it's not course. confidential. No, 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 no. Uh, not only in the sense that my role uh, was uh, simply an advisor mm -hmm. for the European Economic and Social Committee, uh -huh. we, and uh, in particular in the group uh, Industrial Change. And so the European Commission simply asked the group uh, to formulate an opinion uh -huh. regarding an exploratory phase. Uh -huh. It is really at the early stage uh -huh. uh, to see what is the metaverse, so which are the challenges and the risk. Uh, so, in, uh, during the work developed inside the European Economic and Social Committee, we had several sessions with different members uh, in order to write this opinion and to reflect the different vision. The vision, I think, uh, is around uh, some key characteristics uh, that are crucial. So, the first important uh, element is um, prioritizing ethical safe and the inclusive experiences for the metaverse user and so the group advocate for guidelines and regulation that protect user rights privacy security but also address concerns such as cyberbullism data exploitation yeah. offensive behavior and so this is essential to ensure that users feel secure and respect in virtual spaces. So this was one main stone. Okay. Then the regulatory frameworks play a vital role, of course, in governing the metaverse. Uh -huh. And that's why the work done emphasized the need for establishing standard and rules. And it would be the second step, I think. And these measures address challenges related to data protection, intellectual property, interoperability, competition uh -huh. also. And uh, by creating a regulatory environment, uh, I think uh, it's uh, crucial uh, to stimulate uh, innovation, uh, support of your competition, safeguard user and business that are inside these virtual worlds. And then uh, uh, I could say that um, the opinion is um, as a first step uh, of great importance on supporting uh, action that the European Commission has to take. Uh, maybe it's very important that uh, considering the emergence of the metaverse, uh, new skills are required. Uh -huh. And so also the schools uh, uh -huh. uh, have to be adapt the programs, uh, adapt the competencies uh, that the, the new employees of the future need to acquire. I would say, uh, talking from the angle of uh, the education and so as academic uh, and uh, seeing the work done, Necessarily, the, the next best thing for the education is uh, to create new competencies, uh, uh -huh. to adapt also to new technological tools. Uh, metaverse and artificial intelligence change the way we uh -huh. communicate with our students, uh, but require new competencies. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Margarita. Thanks, uh, very, very much for this very interesting uh, uh, 
uh, session with you. Uh, thank you for your listening.